document item, etc. Okay, so work centers, this is new master data that we have not seen before, right? So work centers provide production capacities. That's the basic idea and like I've already said, can be a machine or a group of machines or person or group of people. Anything that can, that has capacity to produce, okay? Work center has a lot of important data for various purposes, for mainly for, you know, cost planning, for, uh, you know, capacity planning and things like that. Okay, and also when you do routing, scheduling, there also you've got work center information. For example, suppose you have to make 500 units of something and you're using work centers A and B, right? Now to find out how long it's going to take for us to make these 500 items, we need to know how much capacity each work center has, right? If the work center has a capacity only to make 10 of these a day, then you're going to take 50 days at least to make those 500 items. On the other hand, if your work center has a capacity greater, then you can you can do it quicker, right? So obviously, scheduling of when various activities takes place depends intimately upon information that is kept in the work center master data. Okay, uh, so here in the master data, you've got various things: the name of the work center, description, task list usage. What might that be? which kind of task list this work center may be used for. Meaning, is it going to be used for routing? Is it going to be used for rate routing? Is it going to be used for master recipes? You know, so it says, what are the various kinds of task lists in which this work center may be used? Okay, so different type of, that's why there they put the super term, not uh, the sub term. Okay, uh, so you've got a uh, uh, person responsible, who's responsible for maintaining this master data, uh, and then standard value key, right? So here, uh, what you see is, uh, you know, they could have just put certain standard values in the work center master itself, right? Some standard values like what is the setup time and so on and so forth. They could have put those standard values as numbers in the work center. Instead, what they do is they refer to it as a standard value key, which is really a reference to some numbers which are kept somewhere else. Okay, the reason is you may have many work centers that share certain common standard values, right? You don't want to maintain these common standard values at individual work center level. You're going to have thousands of work centers perhaps, right? You don't want to have to maintain these numbers individually for each work center. Instead, you say here is here are some four or five or hundred different sets of standard values. And I take a work center and say this work center uses that set of standard values. Okay, so that makes it easy for you to maintain the standard values. So you change that set and all the work centers connected to that automatically will pick up the new values. Okay, the, the analogy is something like, uh, you know, credit control. We'll talk about that later on when we do sales order processing. Uh, we in fact spoke about it too in controlling. So when you're talking about credit control, you don't try to assign a managed credit control individually for each customer, right? That is difficult. Instead, you create credit control areas and then, you know, you may have a certain number of areas, but certainly much less than the number of customers. And then you just assign customers to credit control areas, right? So that process of management becomes easier. This is kind of a similar idea, right? That rather than managing the standard values individually for every work center, you create certain standard configurations of standard values and then just assign a work center to one of the standard values. Okay, it just makes the process easier. So that is the idea here. And then of course you've got, uh, once again, you've got default values, the default values that will be used when you're scheduling work at this work center. Okay, uh, so once again, you see standard text key. It's a key to some set of standard texts which will be picked up and again when you say text we are talking about uh, you know perhaps internationalization right so you'll have a key to the text and it will be maintained in multiple languages and when somebody is using the system in language x it will pick up all the text from that language throughout the system so that is the standard text key uh, and then other key wage data you know what if people who work in that work center what are their wages that will be used for costing and also perhaps in human resources for payroll when people actually work for a certain number of hours and so on. Okay, so that's what you see here. Okay, uh, uh, that we've seen that task list types. Okay, so here, uh, 
this whole thing default values, not just range data, is used to determine all of these kinds of values. Right? The default uh, values are maintained there to enable various things like uh, you know execution time, cost accounting, capacity planning, things like that, which I mentioned earlier, are connected to any work center. Okay, it's a, it plays a crucial role in all of uh, you know all of those activities. Okay, um, and it's copied when used in the routing. All of these values are copied into the routing. Right, whatever required values are copied into the routing, and then the routing will use these values and calculate how much time it's going to take and so on. And which, of course, it's possible for you to manually override in the routing and say, calculated so much value, but then I think this particular thing is going to take a little more time. So you can add on additional time. Okay. Uh, the whole cost center aspect of a work center is obviously what links it to controlling. Right. So the work center may belong to a cost center and whenever the work center accumulates costs, you will accumulate those costs in that cost center. Uh, also the work center for, uh, there is also linkage here to activity types, right? activity based costing. Right? So the, whenever people use that work center, you could charge them for it based on activity based costing. You used a work center for 5 hours and the cost of that work center per hour is so much. Right? So it could be that. May, for example, you may have a copy center or you know some kind of uh, document creation center. And they may provide several services. They may provide document editing, web page creation, this, that. Right? So that's again a work center. So you can see if you use so many hours of this service, this is what you'll be built. Okay, so there's a linkage to cost center, uh, to co activity-based costing as well. Okay, and then you see this concept of formula keys. Okay, so once again, uh, in a work center, you don't maintain specific numbers, for example, for certain things, you won't maintain specific numbers, right? Because, uh, for example, let's say how to calculate the total execution time for some activity on that work center. You won't maintain a number. Instead, you will maintain a formula with the work center, right? And the formula will have several parameters based on which the number would be calculated. And those parameters will be supplied when a routing uses the work center, right? So you'll say when, a, when you assign a work center to a routing, you'll say at this time parameter 1 is, has got a value 10, parameter 2 has got a value 20. So at that time, those values will get plugged into the formula and then some numbers will be calculated. Okay. So this is just a flexible way in which you can specify certain calculations without hard coding them into the work center. Right? A very simple example, I'm giving a totally trivial example. Uh, let's say a work center has a setup time of uh, you know, 10 minutes and a processing time of let's say uh, uh, sorry, the setup time is not 10 minutes. It's got a parameter called setup time, right? And it's got, uh, let's say, uh, another parameter called um, uh, unit time, right? Unit operation time, right? That's it. It doesn't say that the setup time is 10 minutes or unit operation time is 5 minutes. It has a formula. Uh, I mean, it has two parameters, setup time and unit operation time, right? Now, the work center may have a formula for calculating the total time as setup time plus number of units times unit operation time, right? And number of units may also be a parameter, okay? So this is just the formula that is in the work center. Now, when you assign this work center to some operation, within the operation, you will specify the values for these parameters, right? That my setup time for this operation is 10, my number of, uh, you know, units is 200, and my, uh, you know, processing time per unit is 5 minutes. Now the total time will be calculated using the formula that is in the work center. Okay, that's the broad idea. Clearly, this is not a realistic example, but it gives you an idea of what is a formula, what are the parameters, and how it is dynamically calculated in the uh, when you assign a work center to a routing. Okay, so those are the that's the idea of a formula key. So once again, you see they're not keeping the actual formula; they're keeping only a formula key, and there's some other place where they'll be maintaining lots of formulas. And this is only referring to the formula. There may be hundred other work centers referring to the same formula. Okay, so it's like a form, uh, like a family of uh, options. Okay, so again, it's all just 
making things efficient and uh, and scalable. Right? It's easy. You can say, well, why not just assign a formula to each work center? That that doesn't scale well because you're going to have thousands of work centers, and pretty soon this is going to become a, a drudgery. When all the time you know that many work centers can can share the same formulas. So might as well keep the formula separate and simply refer to it from different work centers. Okay. I think really what we need to take away is the fact that there are formulas in the work center that enable uh, us to calculate real values at the time the work center is allocated to routings. Okay, that's I think the main takeaway. Okay. So just before you move on. Yeah. So to summarize, you're saying the work centers don't really store any data at the work center level. It's probably kept either at the plant or the company or the client level or somewhere else. For certain things like formulas and certain default values and things like that. that. That's what I was. I was talking about all of this just in the context of certain default values and formula things. Okay, but I'm looking at this, the, the whole the, the slide. You know, basic data would be client level as Okay. Default values, either client or company code or client. No, it's for the work center. Yeah, so there's no levels. No, but you said default values, those are, those, since they apply to multiple work centers, they're not kept at the work center area, where they're stored, basically. Oh, those, you mean those common values where they're stored? Yeah. That could be even stored at the client level. Right. That could be stored at the client level, why not? Why duplicate it even across company code? Okay. Right, so, so the, the default values and things like that, formulas and things like that, you could show them at any high level that you like. Okay. And do these translate into different tabs on the yeah on the yeah. within the work centers? Right. In fact, the next slide shows that. Okay. You see that they are all coming as tabs. The basic data, default values, capacity, scheduling, costing. Okay. So that's what it is. This is just another way of looking at the same data, saying that you've got all these views and. Um, you know, work center could be any of these, as we spoke about already. In fact, what is added here is production lines uh, for, uh, you know, uh, assembly level manufacturing, which I did not mention earlier, right? So here we are talking about the information in a work center allows us to answer these sorts of questions. Okay, so we are talking about, and these, all of these questions, uh, the, the, this question, for example, deals with costing. Okay, so for example, after you do the manufacturing, you want to find out how much it actually cost. So some of the information in the work center will allow you to do that calculation. Okay, uh, some of these questions are relevant for scheduling. Right, you want like I, the example I gave earlier, you want to find out, I'm going to perform these operations, how much time is it going to take me to perform them? Okay, so uh, how, you know, it's going to, whether it's going to take 10 days or 20 days or 50 days depends upon some of the information kept in the work centers. Okay, and then finally, capacity planning. Right, that is, you say, okay, I want to uh, produce for the next year 500 units or 5,000 units. Currently, our work centers have this much capacity. Right, so how many of these work centers do I need to add? Right, so depending on work center master data, you'll be able to find out how much extra capacity you're going to need. Right? So clearly, information in work centers allows us to answer all these questions. These are all the various purposes for which it's used. Okay. Uh, main, work centers, of course, are mainly used in manufacturing. But clearly, we'll also see later on that they're used in inspection and plant maintenance. Right? So we'll talk about maintenance work centers. These are all production work centers. But... You know, you've got, for example, a big plant, the thousands of machines in that plant. Those machines have to be maintained, right? So in order to maintain those machines, you're going to need some work centers that will perform those activities, right? There might be separate maintenance workshops. Those machines are not used for regular production, but they're used for maintaining the plant in working order. Okay, so you've got those. Um, so work centers also apply to that context, which we'll be looking at when we look at that particular chapter. Okay, routing, we've seen this many times before. Each operation is assigned to a work center. We also know that parallel and alternative sequences are possible in a routing. 
And of course, we've also seen that one material could have multiple routings. And again, we want to distinguish between configurable uh, routings or configurable routings, uh, routings for a configurable material as opposed to just a regular material having multiple routings. Okay. Uh, this again, the multiple routings we are talking about, uh, just like we said, for different lot sizes, your bomb may be different. For different lot sizes, your routing could also be different, right? Or in different plants, you may be using different production processes and therefore they'll have completely different routings. Okay. Uh, so the task list idea, I'm just revisiting it here, right? We're speaking, we're speaking about routings. We're also speaking about task lists. And the task list, as I said, is a superordinate term. When it comes to discrete manufacturing, we call it routing. When it comes to assembly line, we call it rate routing. When it comes to process, we call it master list. Okay, I've repeated this a couple of times. Okay, and again, uh, another way to look at it. This is just one little bit of it. So in discrete manufacturing, you use these terms, bomb, routing, work center, production order. Whereas in process manufacturing, we use the term bomb, which is the same thing, master recipe, resource for a work center, and process order instead of production order. Okay, so just parallel terminology for different types of manufacturing. Okay, so here we are talking about how, what happens when you assign a work center to an operation in the routing. Right. So we said if you go back, um, right, we said every operation, so this has got 50 op uh, 5 operations, each operation is assigned to a particular work center. Right. So this operation is performed in work center 1310, 1320, etc. Okay. So now we are looking at a specific assignment of an operation to a work center. So we've got one work center. And in a routing, we have assigned one operation to that work center. That's the context in which we are looking at this one. Right? So the work center is 1906. It's been assigned some, to some particular operation, operation 13. Right? So it's one particular operation in a routing. And here we are talking about the, uh, you know, the various calculations that are performed basically based on what I spoke about earlier, right? That is, uh, the formulas and so on are picked up from the work center. And for this operation, you enter your own parameters and then plugging those parameters into the formulas, the numbers are calculated and those numbers are what you see here. Okay. Now this process is a lot more complex than I've described it, but a really broad view is that, okay, that from the work center, it picks up the formula at the operation level, you supply parameters, they're plugged in, and the numbers that are needed are calculated. Okay. And now it's possible that a work center could have multiple capacities that are specified in the work center. Okay. It's possible. Under certain conditions, you have this much capacity. Under certain other conditions, you have a different capacity. Right. Maybe, uh, let's say, during a maintenance week, right, when a week, a week during which preventive maintenance is going on, the work center may operate at reduced capacity. During a normal week, it may operate at a certain capacity, right? So those might be two different capacity uh, <coughs> parameters for the work center. Right? So here we are saying that the basis on which we have arrived at capacity here is the, you know, the capacity key 001. Maybe that might be regular time, not during preventive maintenance, something like that, okay? So that, that just indicating the scheduling basis on which we have done that. Okay, so it's selection from among multiple capacities stored in the work center. Right? And then we already said the formula key refers to a formula based on which the actual numbers that are used in this would be calculated. Okay. Uh, standard values are plugged into formulas. Okay. This is just parameters that are supplied to the formulas. Okay. So here we have essentially what we've done is we've visited the idea of a work center being assigned to a routing and all the numbers calculated for that. That's what is going to give you things like the operation time, how much time is that operation going to take, and it's going to uh, give you an estimated cost for that operation. Estimated cost, actual cost could be different when you actually perform the operation, but it's going to give you the estimated cost. 
Okay, so those two things are going to happen based on this. Okay, uh, this also we have spoken about earlier in different contexts. So here we are talking about how you've got a bill of material, you've got a routing, and we are talking about assigning the bomb components to a specific operation in the routing. Right, and we spoke about this earlier. Why this is important because MRP can then calculate the exact time at which a material is needed. Okay, that's the idea here. So you've got a bomb which generally says we need all of these, but if you can say it, this is needed in operation 10, this is needed in operation 20, then MRP can take account of that and get the materials just at the right time rather than getting them in advance. Okay, so that's the idea here. So here we've got a routing and a bomb shown side by side. Okay, and uh, uh, so routing has three operations, operation 10, 20, 30. Okay. Uh, so material A is assigned to operation 20, materials B and C are assigned to operation 30. Uh, I don't know if operation 10 is just the uh, assembly of all of these into the pump. Right? Why? Yeah. Or it could be the setup also, where you don't need any of the materials, but you're just setting up them. <coughs> it's possible. So assembly would not be the first operation, it would probably be a later operation. Huh? So, of the, you know, when you do your bomb um, and you've got documents as part of the bomb, and, and we said, you know, for example, if it's just a guide for how to set it up, you might need just one. Would your tools and equipment also be part of the bomb? No. Or that's, it's a yeah. one specified. Yeah, they're just VRTs assigned to the routing. They are assigned to an operation in the routing. So why would you assign like in assembly instructions to a bomb and not use them as part of the routing in the same way? Uh, yeah, it could be done there also, but there might be other things that will come in the bomb which are not actually materials that are used. <coughs> I don't know specific examples. Okay. So here we are just saying that materials are assigned to specific operations. Now I think his question was, you know, the Documents, the example of a document that I gave earlier was instructions for assembly, right? So his point is, aren't instructions better suited to attach to routings than to bombs, than to uh, the bomb itself, right? I think that was your point. Yeah, I'll take a look at that uh, or think about other examples of where a document may belong to a bomb. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, of course, we've sort of talked about this also earlier. Components which are not assigned to any operation are assumed to be needed at the start. Okay. If we don't assign it, then the MRP will simply assume that those are needed at the very start of manufacturing. <clears throat> right. So here you can assign PRT to an operation, which is what we spoke about earlier. That's not assi that's not part of the bomb because bomb is strictly what's going to go into the product. Other than, of course, you know, document items. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, actually, we finished the first lesson. Let me do one thing. Let's take a five-minute break. I'll save the recording, and then we'll come back. This will be the start of the second lesson. <laughs>